Buongiorno a tutti, e questo è il secondo appuntamento della serie di incontri Stand Chat che appunto curo qua ad Art Verona e che ho la, insomma, il piacere su invito di, di Stefano Raimondi e di tutto il gruppo di lavoro di, di Art Verona. E sono come il titolo suggerisce, sono delle conversazioni molto veloci, molto informali, delle eh, chat, delle, delle, delle chiacchierate delle conversazioni nello stand. Quindi l'idea è che anche dopo un momento, insomma anche storico, abbastanza complicato, ci sia l'opportunità di tornare al rapporto diretto con le opere, con l'artista. E per queste conversazioni si è deciso quest'anno anche di coinvolgere una figura chiave, insomma, che è il gallerista, che supporta il lavoro dell'artista e che non è soltanto dedicata alla vendita, ma è una persona anche che ha una affinità anche intellettuale, credo, con, certo. con, uh, con l'artista. So, the, the conversation will be held in, uh, in English, since uh, Kevork Murad is talking in, uh, in English, so I think you will follow without uh, any problem, I hope, but if you need any translation, just, just ask. Uh, so, um, Kevork Murad was born... Uh, in 1970 and uh, he was uh, in Syria in Syria of course and uh, after his uh, education uh, in uh, Yerevan at the Institute of Art in Yerevan in Armenia he moved to to New York where he currently uh, lives and, uh, and works if i if i'm if i'm true <laughs> and uh, he amongst the the, the, the several uh, uh, art institutions he collaborated with uh, there is the brooklyn uh, museum of art uh, the bronx museum of, of art uh, the metropolitan uh, l'institut du monde hub uh, in paris uh, so he have a very a huge uh, uh, curriculum and um, i was very touched because uh, i never seen your work uh, live before before this occasion but i was very touched by the by the presence the physical presence of the of the of the work they deserve to be to be seen live i think that this is a very important aspect of your of your work and so i would love to to ask you uh before talking about the subjects and the the, the and the concept in general of your work the way you realize the work starting from from this one for example first of all thank you very much for coming here to this gallery i'm very honored to work with studio lakita this is a very important start for me because in my career i develop and create this chapters in my life and this is an interesting chapter where it belongs not only to me as an armenian from syria also to humanity where they're stuck between places they leave their home they're forced to leave their home they don't even know they're going to arrive somewhere safe in the future so this between the two worlds and i call them floating worlds because Nowadays, artists are responsible to document what was there before. Historically, uh, you know, the memories, we have to document it to give it to the next generations. Otherwise, if I am going to say someone else is going to take care of it, it's not right. So when I started creating works inspired by my childhood, my streets, my culture, it, was, it felt relief. I felt like I couldn't sleep at night because it's a responsibility that I always thought about. So when I was creating those layered pieces, I was symbolically referring to different times. Like when you think about 1,000 years ago. Kind of layers. 500 years ago and today. So that is the reason I started exploring layers. So, but then sometimes I'm exploring even different heritage and culture because in Aleppo Street, when you were walking, You could see a mosque, you could see a synagogue, you could see a Roman a Christian church, you can see Armenian Christian. So they're all like almost one place. Kind of melting pot. Yes, so this is very similar to your walking. You don't even know from what window, what fate you're going to see. So, but that was also the fabric of people in Middle East. So they ate together, they drank together without even knowing if you're Christian or Muslim. Because they didn't care, it's a culture. That's why there is no uh, it's a religious symbol in the work. It's culture is very important. So now, after doing this, I wanted to also connect them together with sometimes with fabric, sometimes with ropes, because in the Middle East, I always thinking that the world is like that, but the world is not like that. Every culture is connected with each other. Neighbors, the way they meet. So the fabrics, they are a, a link. A link between them. So the fabric has two uh, symbolism, the link between different cultures and different neighbors, And also, during the war recently, I discovered that people figured out a way to protect themselves. They hang this big tapestry 
to hide from snipers. And then I said, I started thinking also about Christo's uh, artwork, the way he covers it. So now these people, they also cover their, their homes so they can escape and go to their daily work because the snipers can't see them. So I started using it as like a two ways of metaphor. But, but so, uh, for example, this, this, is, this scenario, uh, it refers to something in particular, or it's a kind of uh, imaginary landscape. Everything is imaginary. Everything I do is imaginary. But in particular, this type of work compared to that, almost like uh, if I was in the Middle East in historic places, I'm taking this canvas and putting on a stone and I'm rubbing it so I can take the memory with me. Okay. That is kind of the approach I have. When you look at it, it looks like those carved stones. And it's important for me, even though it's memory invented. So it's a kind of frottage? Kind of frottage. Yes, as a technique. Te yes, oh, the technique is, uh, yeah, the monotype. But here, when you're looking at it, you're almost like thinking it's a, 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 almost like a scanned or a copy of an actual historic thing. So that is the approach in this works. Plus, I'm playing with the idea of the architectures. Whenever I'm using, this is a typical Armenian architecture. This is, a, you know, typical, you know, you can see maybe it's uh, the Islamic in the, the Constantinople area. The way I that, see. Because you don't know if it's a Christian and then converted to a Muslim church. So it's like in the idea of playing with that. And they're all together as like a, a one, one neighborhood. That's the reason I want to create this. And also I can carry it with me. They're like on fabric, almost like a, a sail. You can go somewhere else and you hang it again. You build your own. So it's a kind of nomadic uh, work. Yes, exactly. exactly. And so I, I was also touched by the, by the color because you, you're almost always black and white uh, uh, <laughs> colors that you, 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 you use. Why this, this choice? When the war started and I heard so many horrible and dark news from the Middle East, and I had so many friends there, I said, what is more important for me to create a, a, a fancy work, colorful object, or to document how they're going through their daily life. So almost like you're writing your diary. I said the best way to do that, to do it on a piece of paper, black and white, create sketches of this feeling. So more immediately. More immediately. So that was kind of my daily approach of creating what was happening there. Because I was always with communication. I was feeling a bit guilty because I'm comfortable in my studio in New York. They're kind of uh, always escaping the snipers and all this. So I was trying to document everything what's happening there through my work. So to do black and white is probably the fastest approach to capture this e immediate and, and so that's one. But second, there is something very interesting about this technique. This technique, it does not allow me to go back. It's like a voice. I cannot edit my voice. Like right now we're talking, it always moves forward. So with this technique, because it's a paint directly on the surface, you have to accept as philosophically, accept that whatever comes, it needs to be accepted to move forward. So when I'm creating this with the paint, once I put the surface, you, there is no way to erase it. I see. So with that approach, you accept the reality, you kind of build on top of that, good or bad, it doesn't matter. There is nothing bad about it in, in your mind. You just take that one out. You started creating in your emotions and kind of connect that document to the emotions and build something out of it. Because sometimes the work as an artist should surprise you too, should give you something new. Otherwise you're gonna copy yourself, it, it's gonna be boring. So when I do that approach with the calligraphy idea approach, because my hand is always has to move in a way with two languages. In my head, I have the Armenian language and also I have the Arabic language and there goes opposite of each other. So when I'm creating the work, I also have to think reverse because they're all monotype. I draw and then I press it. So when I'm thinking Arabic, I should start writing like Armenian because it's the opposite. So once you're doing it's this, always a matter of translation. Yes, but also like a mind bending. You're always kind of going back and forth with like mirror idea on mirror idea. And let's create this beautiful fluid connection between cultures in me too. This is the way I'm seeing it. So it's an interesting approach and I'm very happy that never boring because every time I work I feel like the work itself it starts talking to you tells you like okay continue and, and about this um, I was also impressed by the there's a kind of internal vibration on the works yeah. a kind of rhythm then I uh, look into your portfolio into your, uh, your works I, I've seen that you have a, a strong relationship with the music yes. yes so can you explain something more about this relationship please 
So for me, a line should be the perfect, perfect way to translate your mind. It's the, the hardest thing to do, to create the most beautiful line. Because you need to accept the reality, who you are, and confidently say, this is it, this is I am. So every time you create that, there's a dance in it. You're capturing a movement. So if you're listening to music or you're seeing a dancer, you want to be like that. You're like your hand moves like almost a dancer or a singer. So it becomes a rhythm in it. And when you think that you're not going to go back and erase it, you're accepting that reality. It makes it much more interesting because you move forward like sound, like music. So it's like it has a beginning, has end. So this approach, it, when you're seeing it, it has to be this dance. And it, that's why it talks to you and tells me that it's fine, move forward. And it becomes very moving. Every line is moving and it has almost like a calligrapher's idea. It's a, I think it's a simple, but at the same time, it's a powerful thing to learn that your line should be the most perfect thing. You, you exhibited in uh, several uh, insti art institutions, uh, really, all around the world. So can you, can you tell us some, some anecdotes about this, uh, this going around, uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> all around the world? I think... Uh... I have maybe two. One was... Something was, fun can be also something funny, something uh, more serious, I don't know. <laughs> so I, had, I got asked to create an installation at uh, the Islamic Center in London by Aga Khan Museum in Toronto. So they said, you know, we have this partnership uh, with Ismaili Center. And I said, you know, I don't know what I'm going to create. I want to see the space. I walked in, the space is small, but it's very tall, like has seven meters ceiling, but the space is probably the size of this room. I'm like, what am I going to do here? I said, the best thing to do here is the Tower of Babel. And now in Islamic center, Tower of Babel is from the Old Testament. So without me thinking, I'm already pushing the boundaries. You know, if they were close-minded, they're going to say, what? You're bringing something from Christianity into Islam? So, and also the Tower of Babel in my head was round. But then I had to make it oval because almost like the buildings were pushing it. So it's at the end, this piece is almost organically started oval. And then when I exhibited at the, the, the Asia Society Museum in New York, it became round. Almost like a person said, like, let me come out a little bit. So the space uh, suggested the work. It suggested the work. And they, I don't accept any commissions from anyone. They said, do whatever you want. And it was inter interesting that that experience showed me that People's generosity is the way they approach you. They said, you know, be creative and free, even to live with the idea of oval, even though, you know, I had to also compromise with the idea, like I made it oval. So there is one. And there's the other experience, which is a memory gate, this one, uh, the, the video that you see there. Mm -hmm. When I started creating the work, I thought I'm going to make the work enter from a different place. And I have only 10 days to make it. In my contract, I have to enter that day and I have to come out of that day. To build this, this very elaborate layered piece in that amount of time, I don't know if I could do it. So I had in front of me 24 hours to change the plans because I don't know what door you can enter to build the installation, from what door to come in. And I had with me staff, they're ready to, to help me to build this stuff. I changed it three times. And they were so kind, they were like, are you building this? Or at the end, you're just going to have this uh, conceptual idea of the dream. We're going to come in and just dream that you made it. <laughs> so it was a very funny thing because they were so happy because at first I thought they're going to kick me out. They say, you know what? You're not going to do this. But changing this three days, uh, the idea, which is I'm nervous, maybe I cannot make it and happen. So, but you guys also should see the way I make uh, the idea of uh, covering it with paint first. And I remove the paint. To start with, I remove it and then I press it, then I continue doing that. So I'm not sure it's a, right now I'm remembering anecdotal jokes, but those two are interesting to see how people give you flexibility to do your, your creation. Then they're willing to change it, even though it's a stressful time. But I think it's, uh, it's always something uh, exciting uh, also to, to adapt, uh, to, to, to face with different contexts uh, and to let the space suggest the, the nature of the artwork. I think it's very important. But for the last minutes of the conversation, I would love to, I would like to, to involve uh, also uh, Hélène. 
uh, I, I would like to to to, to know uh, how do you discover where in which context do you do you meet uh, a well, um, in uh, in June we did a show uh, on Beirut okay. with a friend gallery uh, of Beirut Naila Kuni uh, June of this year yes okay. yes uh, because uh, after the destruction of uh, the town I thought that something i mean we were very we, i was i mean we were friends we've been friends for many many years so i thought i had to do something you know to uh, to i mean to give importance and to make people know how beirut has been in war destroyed rebuilt destroyed rebuilt so we did this uh, this exhibition and in fact uh, it's the gallery tanit that uh, sent me the exhibition and amongst the pieces there was a very large piece of kevork i mean it was a huge it was six meters long and it was really a very important it was made on it was on paper it was on three layers and it was a very very beautiful piece so i thought you know who on earth is this you know who is he so yes because i had never seen his work and i thought it was interesting and it was very much in my kind of uh, uh taste of, I mean, aesthetic taste in a way, and very much I was interested in the concept because, again, there you could see, uh, in a way, the destroyed, you know, the, the what had been destroyed in Syria, in Lebanon, in other parts of the, the whole area. Of, yes, the whole area. And uh, I was interested also because, as Kevork was saying, it they were just architecture. It was not you know, a church or a, or a synagogue. It was just in general, sort of art, art architecture. And I thought this was very interesting. So at that point, uh, I got in contact with him and I said, well, what about doing something a little smaller than six meters? And so we got in, you know, and so this is how it started. And I thought that this was a good occasion at the art fair uh, to present him for the first time to the public here. I, I guess the answer will be yes, but uh, can you tell me if there is some difference in presenting the work of Kevark, uh, for example, in the context of a museum uh, or other space or no, in a... No, uh, I was interested to see what the public, to you know, if the public was interested. In a museum, it's always, uh, the, 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 a show is sort of, has a different kind of, of uh, position, you know, because here you really have people, people that don't know his work, or people that are good collectors, and some people that are not collectors yet, you know, Curious and so, see. yes, so I was interested to see the reaction of the public. But there's one important point that it connects us also before everything else. Ellen has been to the Middle East, she's been to Damascus. She oh, knows. yeah. That's oh, a yes. kind of link between yeah. us. She knows about the language. So it was kind of an easy way for us, even though she grew up in a in a Western world, but she had her connection to us, and that brought us an easy dialogue to kind of start. Yes, I, I, I my father was a diplomat, so I okay. lived in Damascus, I lived in Lebanon. So you experienced yes. the, the, the reality yes. of that yes. context, yes. okay. And also the feeling, you know, I mean, I can see that this is uh, this kind of concept, is, uh, you know, comes from the Middle East. Yes. Because it's something particular. There's a, no, there's a taste. There's a feeling that you, perhaps not everybody will notice it. Uh, people perhaps are just going to look at it, you know, whether they like it or not, in the sense of aesthetic. Uh, but it doesn't matter. That's also important. But it's absolutely visible how your origin, origins, yes. probably plural, affected the, yes. the, the work. So yes. I think it's very, very important. Okay, so, I mean, um, um, for me, the, the, the conversation uh, is, uh, is done. It's a very short and informal uh, conversation. I would love to, 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 uh, to thank you, Kevork, Helen, and uh, Studio la, la, la Città for having us here. And thank, thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.